Thanks very much, Mary, for the introduction. Uh, first off, as Mary said, Linda O'Neill is my name. I'm originally from Castletown Bear in West Cork, and I grew up on a small uh, sheep and beef farm. And as I was not inheriting a home farm, and I wanted to have a career in dairy farming, I knew I had to set about carving my own cat, career path in dairy. I am now today a 50-50 partner with Pat Ryan, as Mary said, in two dairy farm partnerships, milking 350 cows in Dungarvan. This has led me to my passion of my topic for Nuffield, which is no farm, no problem, routes to a rewarding career in dairy farming. When I set about my research, I wanted to discover further from other people that had carved their path coming from a non-farming background and how they had actually done it. I also wanted to discover were there opportunities in dairy farming for those without land, and how can we as an industry promote these opportunities? The specific objectives about my research when I set about laying down a foundation for research were as follows. I wanted to demonstrate a career path for students from a college going right through to where they can end up in their careers and map it out for them. I've gone into this in a lot more detail on my report. I wanted to gather real life stories from people that have actually done it and what were their motivating factors for doing so. The routes they took along the way and each and every one of them took different routes. And I wanted to see as well what was their biggest influencing factors along the way. The lessons they learned, the supports they got and the advice. As we all know, in every industry there is challenging, challenges and nonetheless it also happens in dairy farming. But from challenges, I firmly believe, come opportunities. I wanted to identify the supports they would require and people would require to get over those challenges and identify what our agricultural industry needs to do to actually promote dairy farming as a rewarding career. Career map for students. After leaving college, they can set about their, their, their work in life, um, get their education first, which is the foundation, which is ultimately very, very important. From that, they can develop along the way, initially start as a farm assistant, lead on to a herd manager, bit by bit taking more responsibility, and then on to a farm manager if they wish to do so. Point number four there is ultimately very important, as any young person today can have a very rewarding career in dairy farming without going beyond this point as a farm manager. If they want to progress further and actually get involved in running their own business and actually being self-employed, they can take the opportunity of going into a farm partnership with a landowner. They can also go into share milking opportunities where they can supply the stock and the owner can supply the land, or they can go out and lease a dairy firm if they so wish to do so. Point number seven is actually what I'm currently doing today, but I did do all the other steps along the way, which were very important to do each one of them before I went to where I am today. When I set about my research from my home office, I spoke, I was very fortunate to speak to some very, very knowledgeable people. I spoke to 10 farmers globally, right, for, right across the world, and between them, they farmed over 5,500 hectares of land, milked over 17,000 cows, and they employed over 120 people, a wealth of knowledge that I was very fortunate to speak to. In industry, I got to speak to Tugas, Glambia, UMB Bank in the US, and numerous private consultants. Just a taste of some of the farmers I got to speak to. Here in Ireland, I got to speak to Joe Jean. Joe was also a member of my own discussion group, the Shared Vision Group. Joe is now farming in Lee Dairy Farm in Carrigaline in County Cork, originally from a small beef farm and doing so very successfully. Michael Cox, now farming out in Missouri, and he's a partner in a partnership in Emerald Dairies. And Michael originally came from Westmead, um, graduated from UCD and headed off to the US to create his own career. Paul Lambert, I spoke to down in Tasmania in Australia, and Paul is milking 700 cows on his home dairy farm. But he's also involved in a farming corporate called Circular Head Far Farms, which milk thousands of cows. But they're different to other share milking models, and their ultimate goal for their share milkers is to buy into the farm and own a farm of land at the end. Olin Greenan, originally from County Monaghan, now farming down in New Zealand, Olin is share milking 650 cows and recently took on another dairy farm, is growing his business very successfully. Chris Proctor, farming in South Australia. Chris, originally from New Zealand, 
and farming in South Australia. Chris is milking over 4,000 cows. A phenomenal growth story in his business, and he's actually purchased those dairy farms. Just a little bit more detail on two of the farmers I did speak to. Kevin Moran, now farming in County Galway. And when I asked Kevin why did he choose dairy farming as a career, and in his own words, as he said to me, he said, he fell in love with the, the accomplishment of a day's work and reading the farmer's journal. And his main accomplishment was milking a herd of cows. Kevin went on to Mount Bellier Agricultural College where he graduated and was awarded student of the year. He was very fortunate with his work experience. He worked with Timmy Quinn, a dairy farmer in County Mayo. And it was with Ke Kevin being, had numerous mentors along the way, but Timmy Quinn is one of his mentors today where Kevin learned for himself the philosophy he wanted a farm in. And that was farm for profit, but most of all, enjoy doing so. Today, Kevin milks in County Galway, 280 cows on 93 hectares. Across the water, I got to speak to Matthew Jackson. Matthew, originally from Manchester City, from total non-farming background, used to go down to Wales with his holidays, on, on holiday, camping with his parents. And it was there on the campsite, there was a small dairy and, and sheep farm. And it was that point that Mat Matthew got introduced to farming. He, he, they camped there for a number of years and he helped out on the farm. But he left school at a young age. He left school at 15 years of age and decided he wanted to carve a path in farming, unsure what, what enterprise he would work with. He initially worked with sheep and beef on that campsite, bought himself a scooter and set about earning more money and working on local farms. He then decided to go down to New Zealand, as everyone was telling him, that's what you need to do, to get New Zealand stamped on your passport. When he went down there, he learned the philosophy of farming with cows, to eating grass and producing milk. Not bringing the feed to the cows, but bringing the cows to the feed. He returned back to Wales, where he started working as a farm assistant on a dairy farm. He grew up to herd manager pretty fast in his roles. And it was at that point he decided to start growing equity. He bought his first young stock. He bought 20, 20 heifers and grew his stock year on year from there. And today, a phenomenal story. Matthew is milking over 1,750 cows on five units in 702 hectares. Phenomenal growth from a total non-farming background. Nonetheless, as I mentioned at the start, there was obstacles along the way for each of the people that I got to speak to. Kevin Moran had the cha challenge on bank finance. Kevin had been refused bank finance nine times before he actually got his business off the ground. But the ultimate was that he just stuck with it and got his ducks in a row to actually grow his business. Olin Greenan, when he started out in New Zealand, he worked initially with Colin and Karen Bird, who are now, as he said, his, his who ended up being future mentors. He started off as a farm assistant with them, but they could see the potential in Olin, and they quickly promoted him to farm manager. And it was that point, Olin said, it was sink or swim for him. He was in the stretch zone. Managing yourself in business growth and stress management was something Matthew spoke to me about. As you can see, I discussed his business growth was phenomenal, but it was nonetheless stressful along the way. He had a young family and a partner, and allowing time for everything was challenging but he quickly learned that he had to delegate or else he wasn't going to grow his business. Chris Proctor, who I said was farming in South Australia, Chris Proctor's philosophy was he went from managing cows to managing people, and that was a steep learning curve for Chris. But he said he quickly discovered the way to manage that was discovering what your use is at and delegate it. Let other people who are better than you take on the job, see them grow and see them develop. Pat Ryan, who I'm in partnership, on a regular basis, we'd have discussion about evaluating opportunities. And it's very important for each and every person to evaluate the opportunity that's in front of them and do what's right for them, not just because what somebody else is telling you to do. I want to also share some very valuable quotes that I got from some of the interviewers I was fortunate to speak to. Olin said to me it was very important for a young person to discover the importance of getting away from the home and clipping the umbilical cord from your parents. Michael Cox in Missouri discussed with me about making good equity gains when he was an employee before he actually went into a business partnership. And working with those employers and learning, they do become future mentors to you in business. 
Don't obsess over job titles. They don't mean a thing in this industry, all in green. And your body language sets the scene. Your passion keeps you going on those challenging days. And it is infectious to those around you. So these words of wisdom resonate with me on a daily basis. Finally, on to the learnings that I got from speaking to each of these people. And these are my conclusions, our lessons that I learned. I found that each and every one of them had an ultimate passion for what they were doing. They had self-belief in what they were doing, and they knew their why. They had ultimate clarity about why, the, why they were dairy farming. They could set short, medium, and long-term goals for their business, and they knew exactly what they were trying to achieve. The importance of getting a good education, it's the foundation for the future. Each and every one of them spoke about their college education that they got and putting that into practice when they went on work experience and being on the farms when they were working with farmers, it was invaluable. The mentorship that they got along the way, be it both from college times or from employers, that that mentorship has stood to them in, in, in future years. And it also led to encouragement. They encouraged them, they, they started to believe in themselves that they could do it. And then when the opportunity came, each and every one of them took travel. Travel, let alone the experience of going abroad, working in another country, it broadens the mind. It was just phenomenal what it actually done for them when they, when they came back to run their own businesses. The importance of identifying the pathway that's right for you, I couldn't overstate this one. It's very important that each per young person today needs to take a pathway that's right for them. Evaluate it, look at it clearly and see, is it ticking six out of 10 for you? And if it is so, go for it. Early challenges equal opportunities. Each and every one of these people, nonetheless myself, meet challenges along the way, but I firmly believe that from challenges bring opportunities. I found that each of these people that I was fortunate to speak to had a growth journey, and this growth journey was both personal, they grew, they learned to know about, they got to know themselves really well along the way, and it also was a professional journey where they upskilled, even though they had got a good education, the life experience they got along the way really, really stood to them to make business success. Finally, on to my recommendations. What do we need to do as an industry to encourage young people in and to have good successors for business going forward for our dairy industry? I firmly believe we need to promote dairy farming as a rewarding career to people even outside of um, the agri-industry and get, get young people in, get them on board. How do we do this? we done this in our own discussion group. We went into the agricultural colleges and we told our story about where we started and where it went today. I firmly believe that did have an impact, but talking to numerous secondary school teachers in recent times, I think we have to take that a step back further. We've got to get into schools when young people are making career decisions and it, we have an obligation as farmers to tell our story and don't be afraid to tell it. As some young person sitting in the audience might resonate with one or two stories and go, that's what I'd like to do. They're making their career decisions at that point. The importance of a good education, there's great college education out there, there's numerous ways of doing it. But when students go out and work experience, it's very important that they're not just coming on the farm to do the power washing or tidy the yard. We, as dairy farmers, need to spend time with them. We need to be positive role models for young people coming through. We need to show them about cows, grass, and people, and they need to know how to manage a bank account and run the business. These will all be um, very important life skills that they will need to go on in their careers. We need to be there to support and mentor people. The mentorship I've got along the way in my career was invaluable. The time people give you, like we're a very sharing industry and we're very fortunate to have that, but we need to do more of it. Young people, I find when you start talking, and telling them about a story. They're like sponges for information, so we need to share and we need to talk more on it. What does our wider agri industry need to do? Our co-ops have, have a job at task as well to help young people get started. There's an aging population of dairy farmers there today who probably haven't any successors coming through. And if they even took on a young person as a farm assistant, maybe it could lead to farm management or partnership down the line, who knows? But the co-ops need to identify those people with no successors and encourage young people to go into collaborative arrangements with them. Our banking industry also has a part to play. From a young age, students need to be talked to when they're in school and agricultural college about the importance of saving 
and setting up good you know, life, ex life standards for setting them in business going forward, that when they go into a future career or take on a business, and when they meet with the bank, that they're well positioned to actually get finance, understand budgets, even if it's only a small thing, like taking out a car loan and meeting your payments on time at a young age. We also need to, we're in a very positive industry. We've heard this morning there is numerous challenges ahead of us. There's challenges in compliance, there's challenges in labor, and there's challenges in getting young people into the industry. But we need to promote a positive perception in this industry. It's a very exciting industry to be part of. It offers a great lifestyle. If you are organized, you can have regular time off. It doesn't have to be drudgery. It doesn't have to be long hours. And if we are to attract young people in, it's important that they do work normal hours, no different to their peers in industry. We also need to demonstrate and not to be afraid to say that there's good equity gains to be made in dairy farming. When I started in dairy farming uh, five years ago, I didn't own a cow. And today I'm a 50-50 partner on a 350 cow business. I firmly believe, I worked in industry and I was on a good salary, but I firmly believe there's no industry would give me that kind of equity gains. And young people need to be told this story as well. Finally, I would like to thank my sponsors, the Golden Jubilee Trust. I'd like to thank Nuffield Ireland for giving me the opportunity to be a 2020 scholar. I'd like to thank Karen and John for the, the numerous Zoom calls and meetings and encouragement they gave us through the challenging times over COVID. It was, it was great. To my 2020 scholars, you're a great bunch and friends for life. Um, I'd like to thank my farm team who gave me time to actually research and compile my report. Um, they, they ran the business in my absence, probably better than I'd done it myself. It was great to see them flourish while I was, while I was um, allowed to do that. Um, Finally, I would like to thank my parents who supported me, mentored me, and guided me to where I got to today. Thanks very much.